Hi, welcome to the School at Home Book Talk. I'm Alita Hansen, your librarian, and I'm telling you about a great book that I've been reading called The Mirror and the Light. So The Mirror and the Light is the third book in a series. They are all historical fiction by the British author Hilary Mantle, and they're all about this man named Thomas Cromwell, who was the right-hand man to Henry VIII in the 1500s. Yes, that Henry VIII. The Henry VIII who was famous for beheading a lot of people, including many of his wives. Thomas Cromwell was the person who helped shape policy and make this happen because they both wanted to abolish Catholicism and get Protestantism uh, set as the religion of England. At this point in time, we've got Thomas Cromwell, who was born a common man, the son of a blacksmith. And through his native intelligence, his wits, and a little bit of brutality, he manages to work himself into the position of the right-hand man to King Henry VIII, a man who was neither who's not a regular man, he's actually part God. That's how the people at the time looked at their king. So on his way up to the top, Thomas Cromwell has stomped on a lot of people. And at, the, at this point in book three, there are a lot of people who wanna bring him down. And this book is a great suspenseful accounting of the toppling of this fascinating man. At one point in the book, Thomas Cromwell reflects to a job he had when he was a young man in the banking house of Frescobaldi in Tuscany, where he was a servant. And he thinks about a game that he played. And to me, this perfectly encapsulates the atmosphere of this book, which, which is a game that noblemen are playing with the lives of regular men. So here we go. In Florence, he thinks, I played at Calcio. It is a game of many players, more a melee than a sport. The young men of family would turn out their stouter servants, 20 or 30 to each team. Mad Englishman he, his excuse being that as his Tuscan wasn't perfect, he didn't know the rules. He can hear the king's breath, his sigh. Henry knows he's there. He gives himself away by a twitch of the muscles at the back of his neck. Ten minutes into the game, you'd be bloodied, the ball itself basted in snot and sand and gore, your breath short, your long bones juddering, your feet stamped to a pace and your hair yanked out in handfuls. But you never noticed or cared once you got hold of the ball. Forward you charge, ball tucked against you, a whoop of triumph sailing over the rooftops. But when you would run ten paces, some bellowing lunatic would hack you behind the knees. So if you want to find out how Thomas Cromwell gets hacked behind the knees or not, I suggest that you give the mirror and the light a try.